Oh, good morning, everyone. This is Brian Innes uh, with the Canola Council of Canada. Uh, we're very pleased that you're able to join our webinar this morning to talk about uh, getting your farm certified for exports to the European Union. Uh, we've got a great program of experts lined up today to provide more information to growers about how uh, growers can access this market. And in the market we're seeing right now with a lot of uncertainty going on and our challenges with China, uh, it's particularly important for the whole industry that we're able to seize opportunities for, uh, for our exports to the European Union. Um, as we get going, we're, we'll, for the next half hour or so, we've got a number of experts and an opportunity for questions and answers. Uh, what I'd like to do is to start off um, just by going through the agenda a little bit and explaining uh, what we'll be doing over the next half hour. So over the next half hour, we'll, we'll hear from a number of experts, including uh, from grain companies who are uh, set to take advantage of this opportunity. We have one representative speaking for, for all the grain exporters, and that representative is Chad Molesky, a merchandiser with Viterra. After that, uh, we'll hear from one of the certifiers uh, who certifies Canadian exports, uh, the International Sustainability and Carbon Certification Organization. And we have Norbert Smith joining us today, who's the Managing Director of the ISCC. We also have with us one of our grower leaders in Canada, uh, Doyle Weeb, who's a director on the Canadian Canola Growers Association and farms just northwest of Saskatoon uh, near Langham. We've got a great lineup of experts to help share their experiences and to provide more context and answers that, that growers may be seeking around how they can seize this opportunity to uh, export their canola to the European Union through our uh, grain handling system. So with that, um, I'd also like to say uh, some logistical details as well. Uh, this webinar will be recorded and made available on our website afterwards. Uh, questions can be submitted through the webinar app um, under the question uh, portion on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, at the end of our formal presentations, uh, we'll take questions that have been submitted and ask them to our experts. And any questions that we don't get to uh, will be updated on our website for biofuel. All phone lines will be muted during this webinar uh, to make sure that you can hear us as speakers. And if you are experiencing any technical difficulties, just ask uh, in the question uh, panel of the webinar, or if you're having trouble accessing that, you can email Cody P at thinkshiftinc.com. That's Cody P at thinkshiftinc.com. Well, with that, uh, we'll get going on our agenda this morning. I'd like to start by giving everyone a bit of background on uh, the opportunity in the European Union and the Canola Council's role uh, in that on behalf of the whole canola value chain from growers to seed companies, processors, and exporters. So Europe is an opportunity for our canola, especially this year. There's been uh, a number of media articles about how Europe has a smaller crop than normal, and we in Canada obviously have canola to export uh, in, our, uh, in the situation that we're facing with China. When it comes to Europe, um, it is a market that has had some challenges for the canola industry around market access, and we continue to work on those across a number of areas. These are things like advocating for predictable and timely uh, biotech approvals uh, for our canola right now. All of our, the canola we grow in Canada has been approved in, in Europe, so it's not a barrier for us to export, but it can be a barrier to adopt new, new innovation in Canada, and so we continue to work on that. When it comes to science-based um, regulations. It's also an important priority in the area of, of crop protection tools, and that's something we continue to work on. And of course, the topic of our webinar today, which is uh, the biofuel uh, industry in the European Union and how Canadian canola can get access uh, to that industry. And that, that is another area where we, we have uh, worked a lot on over the last number of years. So first of all, I wanted to give you a bit of an example of, of what that means. Under the um, a European policy framework called the Renewable Energy Directive, um, that it means that all feedstock used for biofuel in the EU needs to be certified uh, as sustainable. Uh, and when it comes to our canola exports, most of our canola will be going into the biofuel industry in the European Union because approximately two-thirds of all the canola used in the European Union goes to biofuel. 
there's a significant biofuel industry there. there Europe has been a very aggressive uh, jurisdiction. And in fact, they include almost three times more uh, renewable content in their diesel than they, we do here in Canada. So approximately six to seven percent of all of their diesel fuel, um, it comes from renewable sources. So for us to be able to access that market, we need to have our feedstock certified as sustainable. And that's where uh, this webinar comes in today for growers and the industry uh, to meet the requirements of the Renewable Energy Directive. So I'll quickly um, continue here and very shortly pass the floor over to some of our experts. But what we've done as a Canola Council is ensure we can access this market by getting our uh, industry uh, officially registered with the commission and show the greenhouse gas emission reductions that come from Canadian canola. Uh, this is a process that took a number of years and actually was submitted uh, and finalized uh, in early uh, 2018, late 2017. So because of the effort uh, on behalf of the value chain, uh, we have access to this market uh, on an overall framework and now individual uh, companies and growers need to be certified under uh, the certification systems that exist, one of which is joining us today with the ISCC. So it's really an opportunity for our industry to take advantage of right now. Uh, the certification process for growers uh, is quite easy and straightforward, and most growers already qualify uh, as sustainable. And we have a number of companies uh, who are able to, to work with growers to take advantage of this opportunity, including Viterra, Cargill, G3, uh, and as well, other companies are exploring it, such as ADM, and may, they may also be able to offer growers this opportunity over the coming months. Today is an opportunity to learn about how easy it is for growers um, and how uh, and any information that may help growers um, sign up. With this, uh, I'd like to turn the floor over to uh, Chad Molesky, who is a, a merchandiser with Viterra. Chad, are you with us? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me okay, Brian? We can. Great. Thanks for joining, Chad. So Chad's going to explain a little bit more about how Europe is a significant opportunity. So Chad, the floor is yours. Yeah, thanks for uh, inviting me today and appreciate everybody uh, on the line for taking the time to be a part of the call this morning. Um, certainly over the past um, number of months in, in Canada, I think the growers in the industry and the value chain is, is well aware of some of the challenges we've, we've had as an industry um, going into our major exporting destination country being um, China. So uh, with those exports being um, held back for the present time, We've certainly been looking for alternative destinations and the European market has been one that has been growing over the last number of years for Canadian canola uh, and this year that opportunity is growing in quite a vast way. Um, a part of that has certainly been um, the challenges with, with limited exports going into China but also there's just been quite honestly some opportunistic things happening um, for Canadian exports in light of a, a pretty small European crop. Uh, normally, Europe is producing um, 20 to 21 million metric tons of rapeseed domestically there. Um, this season, they're probably only going to finish up producing about 17 million metric tons. So we've seen a big uh, appetite from that marketplace um, for imports. Normally, they're, they're buying stuff from the Black Sea, um, Ukraine, and Australia. Um, but this year, with the supplies that we have left over in Canada, um, diminished exports, we've seen the price of canola uh, unfortunately, for a lot of farmers on the call, diminish, but it has created a pricing opportunity where the Canadian canola is looking very cheap versus some of these alternative destinations. Um, what's happened here as well over the last number of years, um, I guess ourselves as Viterra, we've been certainly um, proponents of the sustainability program. Um, we've been uh, in a program here for almost six or seven years now, so um, I don't want to say we've seen this market coming, but certainly with the changes in the biodiesel market over there over the last number of years and, and a requirement for sustainability, we've seen some opportunities to gain access to this market. So um, with the help of our, our grain buyers and everything else, we've grown our program in, in quite a substantive way. And certainly there's other companies who've joined in on the initiative with seeing the opportunities into Europe. So um, with now a producer base and customers such as those farmers on the line today understanding a little bit more of what sustainability is, um, signing 
declaration forms at, at the grain companies in Western Canada, it's allowed export opportunities to happen and continue to happen. So really what we've been promoting is, is not only Viterra, but certainly as an industry now is, is we're all realizing the importance of this. It's about helping producers gain, gain market access for our products, right? We're looking for homes for canola um, in, in light of some of these global um, trade matters that are happening at present time. So if we look at the last number of years, we've been shipping about three to 400,000 tons of canola to a max of, you know, just over 600,000 tons into the European marketplace. Um, but this year internally, I'm believing that there's potential for at least 1.2 to, to maybe 2 million metric tons of, of export, which is, which is really going to be a function of, uh, of demand of how much we can push into the European market. And, and certainly just price differences of how Canadian canola looks vis-a-vis -vis alternatives that could be flowing into to Europe. So certainly uh, as a value chain in an industry, we should be uh, excited about these opportunities and why as the Canola Council, I know you guys are helping today to try to educate some of the producers because um, I can understand being involved in it for six or seven years. There are still questions for producers coming to the table saying, well, what is this all about? What is sustainability? How do I learn? more about it. So any way that we as a trade can help educate our farmers, um, gain market access for, for their products, it's, it's certainly going to help everybody in the value chain in terms of getting volumes going through grain assets and farmers getting products off their farm. So hopefully that's a, a brief initiative of a, kind of uh, what's going on here today. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, Chad. Uh, we'll have some time for grower questions at the end, and I'm sure there'll be a couple for you as well. So I know you're going to stick around, as well as the other uh, grain company representatives on the call who may uh, also be able to help with that. Um, at this point, I uh, want to very uh, to turn it over to the managing director of ISCC, uh, Norbert Schmitz, who is one of the certifiers who works with our grain companies and growers uh, to meet that requirement in the European Union. So it, uh, as, a, as a country, we've, we've been able to work with the Commission, European government to have our industry ready. And now companies like Viterra have worked with certifiers like ISCC, and, and ISCC will be able to describe to us a little bit more about ISCC's role in making sure our industry can, can seize this opportunity in the EU. So Norbert, I'd like to turn it over to you. I believe you're there. Yes, I'm here. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thanks a lot, uh, uh, Brian, for the kind invitation, and I'm very happy to contribute here to your webinar. And um, we have prepared a little presentation uh, providing an overview about what we do and how ISSC can be applied by growers in Canada. Is the sound good? Can you hear me? Well, you're great. You're very good, Norbert. Yes. Okay. Okay, uh, then move uh, quickly uh, through the presentation. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide. Yes, here we are. We start with an overview about IASCC and uh, we uh, go to the next slide, please. Next slide. Okay, yeah. Um, Brian mentioned this already, ISSC is one of the uh, leading certification schemes uh, for uh, different agricultural crops. Actually, with respect to uh, renewable fuels for the European biofuel market, but also for other markets, I will explain a bit more in detail later on. ISSC is the largest uh, scheme in the world, and we are very happy uh, that we have a continuous and uh, very good relationship with the Canola Council and also with the uh, Growers Association in Canada. Um, so um, here you can see on this slide what we do, uh, which crops we certify. So we do not only uh, do canola. If a farmer is uh, certified, he can sell also soy or sunflower or whatever he is producing as an ISC certified uh, feedstock uh, to the market. We cover all markets. Uh, key market uh, for ISC is the energy market, and here in particular the biofuels. Uh, but we also have a, a strong uh, footprint in the meantime in food and feed markets, and also for bio-based products. Uh, These are uh, bio-based uh, polymers, for example, uh, for the uh, bio-based economy. 
Next slide, please. Yeah, we are a multi-stakeholder initiative organized in an association with more than 120 members. And here you can see uh, an overview of uh, the main members. Canola Council joined uh, ISC at an early, uh, early stage. And also the Canadian uh, Canola Growers Association joined ISSC and we are having lots of discussions and uh, cooperation uh, with the canola sector in uh, Canada. Next slide, please. The question is uh, from a practical point of view, how does the uh, how does it work and uh, what is the relevance of the canola sector uh, for ISC is actually the if you look at the cultivation area it's the largest uh, canola is the largest um, crop uh, most important crop for ISCC followed here by oil palm corn wheat sunflower and soybean next please Yeah, recognitions are important. You mentioned this in the introduction. Um, if you want to enter the European uh, biofuel market with canola, but also the, uh, the feed market, for example, or other markets, you have to have certain certifications in place. And what we always try here with IACC is to, um, to get recognitions for the different markets. Um, as I said, we are recognized by the European Commission for all EU 28 member countries. So if you want to sell to the EU market uh, with ISSC, you are in a very position, but you can sell also to Australia or to the Japanese market uh, because those governments have also recognized ISCC. Um, different large food companies apply um, ISCC as well, companies like Unilever or Coca-Cola. We are involved in the aviation market, in the feed market. Uh, mass pet care, for example, recognizes uh, ISC and so on. So with ISC, you have a solution. It's a one-stop shop for all crops at market. So we do avoid the situation where farmers have to be certified by different systems that uh, different auditors come to the farm and audit the farm. Uh, this can be avoided by using ISC. Next slide, please. Next slide, we'll, yeah, here we see um, the, the current valid ICC certificate. Yeah, as, yeah, good. We can continue here registration and certification process. How does it work? So if you want to undergo a, um, a certification with ISC, what is normally being done is that the country elevator applies for ISC uh, certification and that the farmers become involved um, as, uh, as part of this certification unit, which then consists of the country elevator and the farmers con uh, uh, selling to this uh, country elevator. So this country elevator selects a certification body, SGS, control union, TÜV or whatever, and um, then once based on the selection, and uh, a registration as ISC system user is being done. It's relatively easy, straightforward. You just um, uh, submit the respective company information. The audit is conducted by the certification body, um, and then the uh, certificate is being issued. Um, the certificate has a value, the value uh, time of one year and um, certificate is forwarded to ISC. We review and then we publish on the website. And the ISC uh, website in the meantime has become an, an important information uh, source for many companies looking for certified uh, feedstock um, and all units which are ISC certified are published on the website with the respective contact information. Next slide, please. We will now look at the sustainability requirements of what is being checked and what is being covered uh, by ISSC. Next, please.
We start with the ICC principles, so we look at ecological and social criteria. Um, protection of biodiverse and carbon-rich areas is extremely important and here uh, what is crucial is that the uh, land use change or deforestation after January 2008 is not the law. Um, this does not mean that you, for example, if you cut a single tree somewhere or two or three trees or, or whatever, that this is of course not considered as a deforestation. We are looking here at a minimum size of one hectare of deforestation. What is below one hectare is not considered as a land use change uh, or deforestation. So we have principle one, um, which is most important than the good agricultural practice. We have said working conditions, compliance with human labor land rights, uh, compliance with laws and international treaties and good management practices and continuous improvement. This is always covered by IACC and of course um, the, uh, their relevance to different regions is um, is very different. Canada, for example, compliance with human labor and land rights has, is, of course, less relevant if you compare that, for example, with the situation in a, in a developing country where we have a, a poorer governance, uh, where social uh, regulations are not put, put into place. So, therefore, if an auditor comes um, to a farm, of course, he will not check um, issues which are not relevant in this Canadian um, uh, setup. Next, please. I think this we can, uh, just for your information, biodiverse and carbon rich areas, what does it mean? So it's primary forests, uh, forested areas and so on. We will submit to you, or we have submitted already uh, to the uh, Canola Council, to the organizers, a quick um, a document uh, which uh, describes in detail the sustainability requirements of ISSC on farm level. So you can read it, you can go through it, and then you will find out what is here, uh, the key, what are the key issues for you. Next slide, please. Land use change. Um, what we like. Next slide, please. Land use change. Um, how can that, if this is detected, then a certification with ISSC is not possible. Um, what we do here, yes, you can, can immediately move to the next slide, to the number 13, please. Um, what we do is we, we have a, a nice uh, tool developed which allows us to verify land use change uh, based on remote uh, sensing technology, so we are using satellite images and based on this we can, uh, we can um, support the audit. Next slide, please. On farm assessment, next slide, please. What does it mean? How, how does it work? Um, so as I said already, the first gathering points or country elevators um, they normally organize the audit of the farms supplying the country elevator and then a sample of the farms is taken um, and being audited. So if we have, for example, 100 farmers supplying the country elevator, then a sample is taken, the sample is, uh, the regular sample size is a square root, so this would then mean that 10 uh, farms would be audited and um, and visited by, by an auditor. How does it work? We can look at the next slide. Um, what will the auditor do? The auditor will assess, of course, internal documents, uh, will check um, your field documentation you have. There will be interviews with personal, managing directors, stakeholders, if required. And of course, also visual inspections will be carried out by the respective auditor. Okay, and this is all, I would say, relatively straightforward. Um, people are aware of it and it has been done several times already by uh, many companies which are using already ISSC in Canada. And this is what you can see on the next slide. Uh, we have uh, put here together some um, some companies which are uh, yeah, 
which will be required um, to be sorry somehow it's mixed mixed up yeah i think yeah here some some basic documents will be checked during the audit um, we have the copy of the signed uh, sales declarations, so it's a relatively simple for the farmer. It's just a one pager which has to be uh, 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 which has to be um, signed. And we have a field list it should be available, land rights documents, notified contracts for lease land, and so on. So um, what is actually required here is um, is standard and and normally it shouldn't be a problem for the farmers to show the respective documents to the auditor. Next slide, please. Yeah, this is a final one and here I wanted to finish the presentation with a picture here of the Cologne Cathedral where we are based and uh, yeah, thanks for your attention. Well, thanks very much, Norbert. Uh, we appreciate you giving some background on ISCC as well as the process of certification and ISCC's involvement in that and working with companies like Viterra to ensure that they're able to meet the requirements of the European uh, uh, government, the, uh, the European Commission, and, and then uh, the how you interface with growers and, and Viterra and other companies as part of that. So at this point, we, we have an opportunity to hear from a grower who's gone through the certification process. Um, we are now going to have a bit of a question and answer with Doyle Weeb from the Canadian Canola Growers Association. Um, uh, Doyle, are you with us? Yeah, I think so. Great, Doyle, we can hear you well. Uh, so we're, I think Norbert's going to put himself on mute and we're just going to have a, a bit of a question and answer with Doyle for a few minutes and then we're going to get into some of the questions that have been submitted online. Uh, so Doyle, tell us a little bit about your farm. Well, it's a long-time family farm, I guess, in this area. We it's grown a lot, and we uh, right now grow about uh, 800 acre, 800 hectares, I guess, of uh, canola each year. Uh, total operation is about 2,500 hectares right now with uh, uh, wheat and barley and, and peas or other crops. Well, great. And how long have you been certified for export to the European Union? Well, uh, I guess I didn't know it was to the EU itself, but I think uh, the certification I first did, uh, I think, in January of 17. Uh, Chad, I guess, uh, alluded, alluded to them being involved uh, earlier, which uh, uh, I think, uh, though, uh, that was the uh, time, and, and it wasn't focused on canola to Europe at the time, obviously, uh, uh, I think. Uh, but uh, uh, more recently, we uh, I didn't even realize, I guess, till this past winter that we had to recertify sort of each year and uh, was done that both at uh, at the uh, uh, two different buyers that have the certification process now that I deal with in this area. So I'm certified under with two uh, two different buyers. Oh, great. So Doyle, just to clarify, then you worked with your your local buyer uh, to get certified on one of the grain companies that exports to Europe. Is that right? That's right. The the local rep that uh, deals with my account uh, had contacted all of the farmers he deals with to see if uh, who was interested in. Uh, in taking advantage of this program, uh, but uh, um, yeah, it was uh, as uh, has been mentioned. It's a fairly simple sign-up process, but uh, uh, going in there, I guess having had a little more background probably than most farmers do because of the work I've done uh, uh, with my board position as well. I had a few more questions, I guess, as to what was uh, in the background of some of the questions, and uh, uh, I, th I think the uh, that uh, Norbert may take notes that. Uh, Somehow, I think there should be our chat, even that uh, that our staff, our frontline staff, I think, uh, need to have some of the background notes on some of these things a little bit more uh, handy, uh, uh, so that uh, some clarification can can happen as to uh, what some of the uh, more general terms uh, mean. I mean, uh, Norbert even clarified for me right now uh, the one I asked you aspect of, of conversion uh, from forest uh, uh, that he said it wasn't uh, just a couple of trees; it had to be. You know, like a one hectare area or something, uh, which uh, was uh, was unclear uh, earlier in some conversations I've had. But uh, hmm. that was uh, so. My process probably took a little longer because I had more questions than most farmers would might have. Mm -hmm. Well, that's part of why we're doing this discussion today uh, and, and having you part of it, Doyle. So, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, why you decided to get certified? What what encouraged you, and, and why have you recertified? What's what's been uh, of interest to you about the program? 
Well, I guess I've been a student of the marketplace for a long time as a farmer uh, and uh, always uh, wanting to ensure that I've uh, uh, opened uh, all the doors that are possible to, to know what marketing opportunities are available uh, uh, to the products I grow. And uh, so this seemed to be a, a trend that I knew was coming anyway. And so I've been following it for a number of years, uh, I guess, as to what was going to transpire as as uh, not just these buyers, but other players in the industry, in the food industry, talk about how they want to have uh, certified farms in some way, shape, or form. And uh, this was just the first uh, uh, example of that uh, coming right down to the farm gate. Uh, so I uh, wanted to just ensure that I uh, had uh, uh, all my uh, uh, all my bases covered as to uh, what market opportunities might show up uh, in the near future. So we talked about uh, just a second ago and in, in, in how you got in contact with the local representative, uh, your grain buyer, but can you walk us through that process? What did that process look like for you to get signed up? Well, in, in, in one case, it was even at a farm show. Uh, I'd heard about it earlier, but uh, and I didn't have a chance to go to the actual facility, and they happened to have a booth at the local farm show in the wintertime, and, uh, and they had these forms uh, ready to fill out there uh, and talk to the rep uh, at the time, so that I know the first time it was uh, just uh, spur of the moment as far as making a connection, uh, taking the time to do it. Uh, more recently, it's been a, a more a more uh, 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 deliberate uh, visit to the to the elevator to, uh, to see what their uh, what their program is that they mentioned in an email or something. And uh, uh, yeah, five ten minutes uh, looking through the document, and now it's familiar to me to to recertify is is going to be a, a very simple process each year. So five or ten minutes, and then what, what's required from a paper process from you? Is there something you need to sign? What does that look like? Yeah, really, just uh, five questions, uh, and uh, and a signature at the end to say that uh, these are, uh, uh, the best of my knowledge, uh, uh, what uh, what I have, how I've been managing my farm, and and have uh, uh, available information for them, uh, so that uh, if a, if an audit happens to be required, that they. Uh, they would be uh, using this as just as the base that it's, it's common to everybody. I think that both uh, both uh, buyers had the same form from ISCC uh, for certification, and uh, so uh, the uh, the process was was quite simple. Hmm. Great. Well, thanks, Doyle. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we go to question time? Uh, I'll just add maybe what I uh, think that farmers may be reluctant a bit because it's uh, it's unclear in, in, in lots of people's minds as to what sustainability does mean. But but as far as the program goes that allows for this market opportunity, uh, uh, I think until there's also a little more evidence that I can go to the coffee shop and say, uh, if I do, I haven't talked about this much uh, with other farmers actually. Uh, that I haven't had, had a chance to do it or didn't come to mind. But uh, if all of a sudden there is a, a notification that there's a, either a premium for that for that for that market for those that are certified or at least a, a call for for deliveries uh, uh, of certain contracts uh, based on that certification, I think that that'll make go a long ways to uh, to showing that there's some advantage. Right now, it's uh, in a lot of farmers' minds just uh, kind of hypothetical. Well, thanks, Doyle. Uh, we've had a lot of questions come in on the web. We'll try to get to as many as we can, and some that were submitted beforehand as well. Um, so what I'll do now is just start with some questions and, and have either Chad, Doyle, or Norbert respond to them. One question that came in right off the top for Chad uh, is, uh, Chad, you, you gave a number about how much the opportunity, uh, or the size of the opportunity in the EU of 1.2 million tons. Is this just for Viterra or is this for the industry in total as you see it? Yeah, no, that's industry in total. Um, I, I think we'll easily hit 1.2, 1.3 with, with upside potential of, uh, of 2 million tons this year. Um, and, and a part of that, might only be some of the limited limitations of that may just be the grower signups, right? So um, for us as an exporter, uh, along with the other exporters on the call and across the industry, I mean, we really need the growers um, to be certified, right? Without the certifications, we don't have the volume to export it. It's, it's really as simple as that. So um, to Doyle's comments, I think the biggest thing is um, from this call and her, hopefully hearing from Doyle is that, we need to reassure the producers that it's an easy process. Um, it's as simple as Doyle mentioned, coming into your local elevator location, uh, answering five questions, ticking off a box, and you become sustainable. So 
the more producers that we have signed up as an industry, the more opportunities we're going to have um, for exports of seed. Um, to Doyle's comment as well, and in terms of seeing something tangible, you know, it may not always be that you're getting a two or three dollar premium because you're signing the the declaration form. Um, in instances that will be happening, I've heard of it happening, and certainly we've done some things like that as a company at times. Um, but inherently, it helps support the price, right? The more canola that we as an industry can get out of this country, the better the prices are going to be. It's simple supply and demand, right? As the as the market's being weighed upon with supplies, we're trying to find a way as an industry to get more seed out of this country to help help the price and and keep the flow. So certainly, us exporters need need the growers to to buy in on the program, and we've got to make sure that um, to Doyle's point as well. Our country staff, when you farmers are coming in to, to sign the documents, there should be no confusion, right? It should be very simple, should be straightforward. Um, and all of these questions, if, if, if you look at them and understand them, I mean, almost every single producer in Western Canada will pass. So, you know, there's no fails or things like that. Aside, I mean, the, the only major thing would really be the land conversion. I mean, all these other things about farming in terms of environmental and good agricultural practices and in terms of... Um, making sure we're applying our plant protection products accurately and safe working conditions. I mean, that's, that's Canadian farming, right? There's, there's nothing that's abnormal about any of that stuff. Right. So um, we believe at least internally that the, the process is, is very easy. At least we've made it in such way it is for growers and the on farm assessments if farmers do happen um, to go through that process. It's, it's very simple and easy. I mean, we've had, um, we've been doing these audits and assessments for, a number of years and uh, I can assure you that most of our farmers who've been through them will say well geez that was easier than I thought it was going to be it's uh it's like a, a talk at the coffee shop with uh with a guy coming in from uh from an agency it's 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 very simple and there's uh there's no concerns with with answering these questions or so, so I, have, I have a couple quick questions uh, for you Chad that have been coming in and then we're going to go to Norbert for a question uh, so, Chad, we've had a couple questions from uh, from two Lees, in fact, asking if there's a cost to be certified. And just can you clarify again, uh, whether it's Viterra or Cargill um, or G3, I think the answer is the same for all companies, but growers, uh, if growers are interested, what do they do? So is there a cost and what do growers do if they're interested? Um, no, there is no cost whatsoever in terms of coming in and being certified as sustainable. Um, so that's that's easy in terms of what growers need to do for us at Viterra. Um, we've got information on our internal website if there's questions about uh, the program that need to be answered. But it's as easy as calling our, our local customer account representative at your local facility. Um, they've got material at hand if there is additional questions um, that, that need to be answered. But pick up the phone, um, drive to our local asset, um, and they'll have you certified in no time at all. Um, it really should take no more than five minutes to be to be quite truthful with you. Great. Thanks, Chad. And we, we would have loved to have all of our exporters on the phone, but it would be uh, difficult to fit everybody in the program. So if there are other questions uh, on G3 or uh, as well on Cargill, all companies' links are on the Canola Council website and where you can go. But each company advises growers to contact their local uh, elevator facility and, and talk to your buyer about the opportunity. Wanted to now turn back to Norbert, uh, if you can take yourself off mute. We've had a question um, about uh, the time period for land conversion. Can you clarify again uh, what that time is uh, where uh, it's really important that the land use on growers' farm hasn't changed? Yeah, yeah thanks uh, for this question. Um, the cutoff date actually is January 2008. And uh, this means that after January 2008, uh, um, land conversion um, from one of the categories of the, let's say, of forests, of primary forests, or protected area, or, or biodiverse grassland to agricultural cropland is not allowed. And what is the background or what is the reason behind it? It's actually it's a legal requirement which is set in the Renewable Energy Directive. And this has to be fulfilled and this must be covered and this is extremely important. Um, so um, it's not an ICC specific requirement, this applies to all systems which are recognized under the Renewable Energy Directive. 
Great. Thanks, Norbert. I have a question coming back to, I think, probably best to Chad. Um, it's a question for essentially the, the exporters. Once a grower signs the form, how long does it take them uh, to be certified? As soon as, uh, as soon as they come into the elevator location and, and sign the document, they're sustainable. So it takes seconds, I guess, the moment they moment they click yes or agree to the, the five questions, they are officially sustainable. Great. Um, now we, we have a question, um, I think, for ISCC. Uh, the question is, how long is certification valid for and what's the, the process for renewing that certification? Is that uh, process the same to renew it as it was to establish it at the beginning? So how long is the certification valid for, uh, Norbert? The uh, certificate is valid for one year. This is a uh, general rule, um, and uh, then it has to be redone. So there will be another audit taking place, um, and another sample being taken uh, from from the farm farmer's base. Um, so this is being being applied. What we see is if if you look a bit at the efforts required, we see if companies undergo the first time certification, of course they have to prepare and certain efforts are being uh, required and uh, but but then already in the second year the third year it becomes easier and and the straightforward uh, uh, process i would like to make also a brief comment to the previous uh, question if i'm allowed um, uh, maybe also in the context of accelerating um, processes what the country elevator um, could do is if he uh, prepares uh, for an audit, um, he could start, let's say, with two farmers or three farmers getting the set declarations from two or three um, uh, farmers. And, and then he gets uh, certified with the two or three farmers. And then um, throughout the next 12 months when he has a valid certificate, he can take in more and more farmers and more, with more and more set declarations. And then after one year, when the reorder is done, and it's say he has at that time then 100 farmers with 100 set declarations, then the auditor checks the sample of the, um, uh, of the 100, which would be 10. And this is an approach which allows to get certified with a small supplier base and then to increase continuously the number or the volume of sustainable material. Thank you. Well, thanks, Norbert. Uh, we're almost at the end of our time. I've got a couple more questions and then any additional questions we don't get to, uh, we will then post on our, our website. Um, a, a quick question here. Uh, uh, for Doyle. Uh, the question coming from a grower is, uh, it sounds like it, it might be considered that our canola production meets the standards. Um, Doyle, in your experiences, have you seen through this process any changes that a farmer might need to make to qualify? Or when you looked at the process, uh, would you say that most growers would already qualify? Well, uh, like I said, as Norbert uh, or someone has alluded to or Chad that you know, almost uh, virtually all farmers do qualify now. I think uh, uh, it's, uh, I'm not sure what Norbert's uh, reaction would be to to someone who, uh, you know, converted some land in 09, say, I mean, 10 years ago, uh, not recognizing the uh, environmental impacts and, you know, buying into that, uh, into those, uh, uh, those sustainability uh, uh, practices. Uh, and so how long will it be before some of those past practices that, that may uh, not, may, may keep you from qualifying now, how long would it be before you would be able to qualify? Uh, uh, maybe pose that question to him if you, if you could supply an answer some other time maybe, but, but uh, no, I, I, the, the, uh, the questions are, are general, you know, quite general in that sense that, that and nothing was flagged uh, too much that, uh, Suggest that I would need to change anything now. The uh, an audit might uh, say it's it, I pass, but uh, I should uh, be concerned about the fact that I, you know, I don't lock my 
my uh, shop where I store my chemicals. Is that, does that mean it's not secure? Uh, I'm not sure what the definition of that is, for an example. I guess I'm <laughs> being uh, brutally honest here, but you know, uh, so I, I haven't been told that that's uh, a requirement. Uh, but uh, um, so uh, uh, I haven't uh, uh, changed anything because of this process. Uh, I thought I was uh, uh, responding over the years to uh, knowing what are better farming practices and you know various uh, environmentally sensitive practices that uh, I should adopt and uh, you know it goes back over it'd be almost 15 years ago now I completed an environmental farm plan and made a few changes because of that process uh, knowing having learned some new things so um, uh, maybe that's all suffice that as an answer. Great thanks Norbert and the last question uh, we'll go to Chad Ford. Um, and this is really a question for all the exporters, but Chad, you're on the phone. Uh, so, Chad, when we, when we look at this uh, assessment ready checklist uh, that the Canola Council has up on its site, or, or the, uh, the five questions that growers need to answer, uh, who do they reach out to if they need to understand uh, more about that, if they have questions about that, um, about the certification requirements, for example? Doyle's mentioned that on the call, and maybe you can clarify. We've had a couple other questions on the webinar um, about some details. If they have, if growers have questions, where do they go? Yeah, uh, it's as simple as calling your local elevator location, speaking to your customer account representative, and they should have all the details for you, or can certainly get the answers for you if for some reason they don't have an answer to something. But I mean, we've been educating our staff. We've got They've got material at their disposal to help uh, answer any questions that might arise from the farm gate. And if for some reason they get stumped with something, uh, they come to me and I'll make sure we get the answers to the, to the producer. So yeah, just get to your elevator. Pick up the phone and call if you need to, whatever's easiest, and they'll they'll hopefully get all the answers you may need. Great. Well, thanks, Chad. And I know we've had the same commitment from G3 and Cargill as well, uh, whose contact information is on the council website, uh, and I'm sure uh, growers have their local buyer contacts there as well. Uh, so with this, I'd like to wrap up our webinar. We weren't able to get to all the questions, but we will endeavor to put those on our Canola Council website. Um, and we do appreciate everybody taking some time out of a busy uh, uh, early harvest season. Uh, we wish everyone a safe and productive harvest um, and really uh, appreciate the, our experts as well for joining today. Um, uh, the Managing Director of ICC, Norbert Schmitz, uh, um, Chad Molesky, a merchandiser with Viterra, as well as uh, Doyle Weeb, a uh, director with the Canadian Canola Growers and SAS Canola. Uh, I remind everyone that this will be uh, recorded and posted on the Council website and that all, in, all the uh, information um, for uh, contacting uh, your uh, local grain handler as well as information on the program is also available on the Canola Council website at canolacouncil.org. From my perspective here at the, at the Canola Council, I want to thank uh, Emily Bergeron, our Director of Public Affairs, for all her work in putting this together, as well as our communications team in Winnipeg under the direction of Heidi Dancho. So thanks again, everyone, for joining us today. Um, and please uh, stay safe this harvest season, and best of luck in accessing new markets to Europe uh, through this certification program. Thank you.